Next question is from Cool Wolf Lives. What are your views on the Turkish getup? What is it useful for, and in what situation would you program it? This is a great exercise that allows you to really see the uh, the bias in people in the fitness space. Yeah. Okay. Because the yeah. Turkish getup doesn't it, really fit in most people's programming. Yeah. Situation. If, if you okay, so if you don't know what a Turkish getup is, you can go to Mind Pump TV, and we have a couple of videos on on the breakdown of it. But it's literally a full body exercise. You go from yeah. the floor to standing while supporting a dumbbell um, overhead. So if you're a bodybuilder type and you write workouts based off of body parts, where the hell do I put a Turkish mm. getup? If you're a power lifter, where do you put that in? Yeah, it's not like a squat. It's not like a deadlift or a bench press. Like, where would I put that? If you're a competitive athlete, maybe it'd be tough, although I'll make the argument that a Turkish getup is exceptionally good for, for grapplers in particular. Um, but it's a full body exercise. And here's the value of full body exercises. The value is not in the, I can get maximum muscle growth out of an individual body part. The value is not in the, I can lift tons of weight and get this huge overload. Yeah. The value is in getting the whole body to communicate well to, with each other, with itself. Yeah. It's in getting all the body parts to work well together, which is extremely valuable. It's actually more valuable than the last two things yeah. I just said. Yeah. I don't even, uh, yeah, I don't know if it's just because of my music kind of upbringing and background, but I just think of of playing certain musical instruments all the time, but I'm never like coordinating all that together. And so if I'm thinking of like an orchestra or something where you're getting like a bigger volume of instruments involved, but they have to sound good. They all have to work good together for it to, to, to be right. And I look at this as more of a, a movement specific exercise where it's, uh, it's something that's going to tell my body like how effectively I can communicate and also like if I have true command over my body to, to produce uh, you know things desired outcomes that I want and so for me to then uh, it, it, it I use it a lot like mainly as an assessment or also as just like something that I want to look at uh, you know see where like the status of, of my client or somebody that's you know an athlete of mine. I, I used it a lot to kind of see how their body could organize in a certain fashion for me then to take, you know, more complex movements uh, and introduce them to those. So we've obviously made the case of the value of the Turkish getup, but the part of this question too is like, how would we program mm -hmm. it? So I, I see three places um, and then I'll tell you how I use it most often and probably recommend it to clients. To Sal's point earlier, obviously, if you're a very specific, you have a very specific program, you're a bodybuilder, you're a power lifter. Um, it, 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 not to say that it, it, it doesn't still have value for those programs. It, it absolutely does. Um, but it's, it's less important on how I program that for someone who's a very, very specific goal like that, but everybody else, right? The rest of the world that just wants to be healthy, fit, more muscular, less body fat, move well, this belongs in there. Um, and the three ways I'm using it, either one, to start a workout, two, how to, to the end of a workout, or three, all by itself some days. And this is how I use it most often. So uh, I got to think that I'm not alone here where there's just some days when you just you don't have it and you need to do your full routine of your workout or – Maybe you've been hitting the gym really consistently and you want to go an extra day in the gym. And so you're there, you know, a fourth or a fifth day, which is an addition to your normal workout routine. This is where I love to just do this movement by itself. There's, there's only a handful of exercises that I may come to the gym and only do that exercise for the entire workout. This is one of them that I think is phenomenal for that. I love to teach a client how to do a Turkish get up. And then when they're traveling or they're doing something, I don't need a lot of equipment. I'm like, I just want you to practice your Turkish. I'll, I'll give them like how many I want them to do. I want you to do X amount for so many sets and, you know, pause at this point. It's like broken down in eight movements, right? So it's like mm -hmm. eight movements all in one. And it's a great full body workout. And it's great for you just to practice and get good at it. So Sometimes I will come to the gym and that's all I will do is a Turkish get up. And there's not a lot of exercises that I feel give such a great bang for your buck that it makes sense. Like you would never come to the gym. You'd be wasting your time or I think it would be silly to come to the gym and do bicep curls for, as your one workout mm -hmm. or to do lateral raises. There's a lot of, or even rows. And there's a lot of exercises that I think are 
yeah, those are great exercises, but by themselves, just doing that in the gym, eh, whatever. But squat, squatting, deadlifting, overhead pressing, Turkish get up, you know, that's in there in those exercises that I think have enough value yeah. to do by themselves. And I, w- I would say if you are a, a power lifter or a bodybuilder, this is a great exercise to do on your off days, kind of mm-hmm. like what Adam's saying. When you have an off day, first off, active recovery is better than just sitting around. Practice some Turkish get ups, uh, take your body through those movements. It works the whole body. Yeah, it covers a, all areas. Covers all areas. Look, think about it this way. I'm going to do a sports analogy. I know when, uh, oh, you guys boy. get excited I was just kidding. Okay, when I ahead. do this. But yes. you know, think of a basketball team, right? Which team is going to perform better? The one where each individual player just practices by themselves all the time? You, if the point guard is doing his thing all by himself all the time. Everybody else is doing things all by themselves all the time. And they're really good on their own. They're doing the drills. They're shooting the ball. They're dribbling. They're going through their mind, all the different plays. Or what about another team where the team plays together? Mm-hmm. They always play together. Your body is like a it's, – it's very similar to that team. You do have individual players, your biceps, your triceps, your shoulders, your – your chest, your lats, your quads, your hamstrings. You've got all these muscles that on their own do something, but really they don't work on their own, almost never. They always work in concert with the other muscles. And so these full body exercises enforce and create better communication through the whole body. Tell me one instance where that's not valuable. Right. It's valuable for everybody, right. even for bodybuilders that develop individual body parts. I think it's still important to do this because if all you ever do is focus on individual body parts, you actually start to you you may create dysfunction. You may de- you may have overly developed strong muscles that don't work well together. And I understand why it's hard for people to see value in it that are just muscle focused and less movement focused. Like, it, and it's it's hard for me because I, I always to struggle with that because I was so athletic minded with like the outcomes of like how I'm building somebody up and I'm seeing their performance increase and their lifts and their strength. But, uh, you know, cause I used to use this a lot as a way to start, um, being able to coach somebody and, and really get them to understand their body better. So they have to be able to keep control of their hips and, and while they're rotating and, you know, do all these little nuanced things that then I have to be able to teach when they're throwing a baseball, you know, like if, if I'm a coach and this is something that I could, they could start to understand that like, oh, well, if I hold, you know, my body in this position and, and you know, I don't elevate my shoulder while I'm now getting more torque out of my torso, I could actually like throw the ball faster and harder and more leg drive, all these like little things that you can kind of point out. Like you need that, you need that kind of assessment every now and then. And it's very valuable to, to start that. I actually think it's the most underrated exercise I don't think that. I think of all the exercises. Agreed. You, you, how often do you guys walk in a gym and see someone doing a twister? Never. 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 I mean, it's like one out of every like hundred visits I come to the gym, I catch somebody actually doing that movement. You'll see it, you'll see it maybe in an MMA gym or. Yeah, right. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, if you worked in a, like a UFC gym, maybe like, or you work somewhere where there's, that's common, you might see it more often. But in a traditional gym, which by the way, I think that's who it, it, traditional people, your average person, just body fat, muscle, move better. These people need to be doing this movement more often. It can go at the beginning, it can go at the end, it could stand alone by itself. It belongs for in everybody or most everybody's programming. 